So today I'm uh, presenting on the debugging. Okay, as you know, like debugging is a very good thing. We need while coding. Okay, we many times stuck. So debugging is such a great thing which needs to be used very well. Okay, so let's start. And uh, why I created this presentation? Okay, I was talking to one many of my colleagues like me said that they're not using the best way which is supposed to be. Okay, we are using the same old way like check out the logs and all. Okay. So what we get in the debugging of Salesforce, okay? We only get the logs. This is the only thing that we get in the Salesforce. So while we are doing anything, like we are executing some FX code, okay, we're creating record, or whatever happening in the Salesforce, we do only have the logs. So this is the only thing we can fetch information from, like how the way code is executing, what the flow is, what the data is there. So this is it. The second thing what we do is we use the system debugs, right? Like I want to check out some values into the log. Like what is values there in the code at this time? What was the value or whatever we want to fill like the XP flow or whatever? We use the system dot debugs, right? So this is the traditional way what we will or I am using from a very long. Okay. So as you can see, like I put this a little weight, so it's like downside and it's a little lighter. This is the old way I was using the system debug and the logs. Now that this is a new way, like it's I was very happy with that. Okay. But when I come to know about the new way, like how I can fetch more details out of logs. So like, oh, it's a very smart thing. Okay. So let's go to this new way. So what we get in there is the same thing with logs. Okay, but logs with some more info windows out there. Okay. So this I'm going to explain you in the coding part, but how I'm going to use that. So like this is the log with some smiley out there. Okay. The second thing it comes into this one is the checkpoints. We usually see is like in the uh, FX class, we find it like on the line number, we can click on it and it shows a red mark over there. Okay. Like some of maybe you know about that, but I myself didn't know about it. Like I almost have the two three years of experience, but I never used it. I was considering like in some big points that we use in the FX and all. But I don't know like how we use it. So very soon me and my one of our colleagues page like working on this and like what is this and we figure out like how to use it. So this is the good part and to come into this way. Okay, the same. So now I'm explaining how to use these things and all. So this is the same class, whatever class we are having. Uh, it's visible now. Okay, which is the same old class, whatever class you're using. Okay, so I just use an email class with some methods into it. It's like send email and then the checking the result for the inspect results that is using down there. Okay. So just to send an email. So the, if it, I go to the traditional way, like what I was using earlier, I go to the execute anonymous window and here I put my email ID and the subject and the body part. So I'm just executing it and I'm opening the log at the same time. Oh, it's taking time. Okay. So here are the logs. This is the log what we usually get. And we just try to interpret knowledge from this particular log. We go down and we try like whatever line number we are here, like some exception occurs. So we just check out the line number here. So like it is providing some good information. So what we go is we like try system dot debug. Okay, then we use the debug option down here. We just click click the checkbox so it only like reduce the logs to the debug logs. Like only logs will be shown here. But the problem with this system dot debug logs like I created some log logs. Okay, and then I need to do execute that again and making changes to the code. Okay, we writing some line of code. Okay. So this is the thing we need to do while we go to the system dot debugs. Okay. We can filter out or some good options are here, but not the means much information we are interpreting from there. So what we I'm using now is perspectives. Okay. So if you ever checked out, there are some already created like all debug log only analysis. So some more info windows get added to that. So getting more information out there. Okay, 
I, I already created one for myself, the windows I do need, okay? So when I click on it, it will change the perspective of that logs. It's taking time to come the speed, just a second, okay. So it's now changed, okay? So now there are a couple of windows on the screen. The execution log are there, but some more windows are added. <coughs> So how can we interpret more knowledge out of it, okay? So this window I don't use much, so I'm just shrinking down the size. So this is the execution log, okay? As soon as I like want to check, I'll just click on any of the line. Uh, suppose I go to this mail one, okay? So this is six number line. So here is the source window. This is the source window which shows like at this time which line is getting executed. Okay, so here you can see that particular line number five is highlighted. It means at this particular log level, at this time, this particular line is getting executed. Okay, and this particular extract rest window, what it does is it show the execution hierarchy, like from where the code is started and from where it is now. So like I clicked on it, so it is like into the same send mail method URM. So it is started from executed anonymous. Okay. And it is in send email. So here, here it is the values that we can fetch out this one. And then the execution uh, execution stack. Okay. So it is shown like how much time and the read size and all those information at the time we are more complex in the code. Okay, this is very simple though, like two methods are there. It's like more complex. We do not like uh, Salesforce has some uh, some limitations. Okay, for execute and all, like you and all. So we can just check out like how much time it's taking because the CPU limit is there. What is the heap size and all? So that we can um, interpret from the knowledge from the execution stack. And now comes to the variable part, which is like one of the favorite of mine, which helps me a lot. So like at this time, when this line number five is getting executed. How many global and local variables are created? Okay, that comes into this variable window. So there's no need to put the system dot debugs. Okay, anytime I want to check the values, I got to want to check the address value. What is the address in the address variable? This is the address. Mail object. It is showing this one because it's an uh, object that's into it. So it is showing some hash key. In the subject, it's a string, so it's showing the string. And this body is showing some string errors. So it's string down because it's not showing the whole value over here. Okay. So this is what we can read from the perspective. How to add these window? Come to debug and view log panel. When you click it, click on it, you get the list of all the panels which we can add. Okay. So these are all the panels which we can add to this and like I just want one uh, stack free and source list and variable free. So I put that into all and then I save the perspective from where we can save the perspective and give the name from the info window and save perspective as and this is the perspective manager where is the list all the list of perspectives are there. Okay, so now come to the last window which are string. So here is the save order, okay, limit, timeline, and execution units, okay. So come from the limit, which is useful. Like if I'm using any of the thing, like I'm sending email here, so it is like the email, email invocations are like one, because it's, uh, I'm just from this uh, line number, this, like six, so it's use so far means zero, request total one, and total available 10, like 10 requests are available for this email sending. So this is will be available here. Now come to this point, the timeline, like at what time, what thing is getting executed. Okay. So like the Apex code, it will started from 1607 because I executed it from the anonymous window. It used this much time duration to get executed all. We can check the DB transaction, validation rules, call out and each and everything over this tab. Okay. So this, these are the useful other uh, are like not so much of use. So I'm not going to tell you this all we're really running short in time. Now come to the breakpoint part. What, what is especially I created this presentation for? Okay. 
So suppose I put the breakpoint over here. Okay, it's like the problem with the Salesforce breakpoint. It's not like those what we get in the Eclipse and all those IDs. Like the execution will really stop here, and then we can continue the execution. It's not like that. It just in a you know uh, we can uh, assume it like in a snapshot or something. But at, at this time it will create a snapshot or something. Okay. So I put the breakpoint here. The checkpoint is an appropriate term for this. And uh, if we open it, I'm into the checkpoint tab. Okay. So here it is the showing what how many checkpoints we will create. It will show down the all the list down here. Okay. So for now we created one. So it is showing like for the email mission specialist file, we've created a checkpoint on line number three at 30. Okay. So this is it. You can see that this window is still empty okay? because the code is not executed yet. So it is empty. Once it will execute, okay. So all the breakpoint values will be here. So let's uh, execute it. I'm executing the same code again. Taking a little time. Hold on. So now, if you check checkpoint window, so it is filled now because one time this checkpoint is getting executed. Okay. So now, if I click onto this, I double click on it. So it will open the. As I said, it's snapshot. At the particular line, how many global or local variables were there? It will. So the list, it's like first one is the two address. It was the list. Okay. So it is showing the list. So list was containing only one one value. So it's like the key, the value, and the value was this. And the second object we created was sending the email. Okay. So here's the email object. It is having more values and all because it's like Salesforce predefined variables and this comes with many of the default properties and all. Okay. Now the subject it is has the value what we provided in flight path change the address what we just uh, splitted this two address so this is the address and the body what was in the body it is showing here okay so this is the checkpoint how we can use the checkpoint so these are the steps which we can use with the debugs like to fetch out the more information and see going for the on the log levels okay. Like you're working on more complex code, it's like running the CPU will be running out of time. So you can check out like what is causing like what component or what code is causing more time. Okay, so these are like the good stuff. Even the variable values, like more more of the problems come when we have the uh, invalid values into the variables and we putting them into this code. So we just uh, take out like so much time putting on the system or debugs and check out whether this value is correct coming correct or not, this control and all. So that can save our bacon. So this is it. Thank you, everyone. Okay, so mm -hmm. uh, can you have one perspective from the 